Hmm? Again? Who could be doing this? I decided to install security cameras. And there, the footage captured a surprising person. Inside the garbage bag, there was something I never expected. My name is Samantha, a 32 years old office worker. Currently, I'm in a relationship with a man named Joe. We met through work. Joe used to come to the company I work for frequently for business purposes. He was friendly and sociable, so he often talked to not only the assigned staff, but also other employees, including me. He even invited me and my colleagues to a drinking party. Through that drinking party, I exchanged contact information with him. He was very interesting, and even before we started dating, we exchanged messages almost every day. After that, we started going out for drinks together. He had a cheerful and lively personality, but when we were alone, he would become a bit more calm, and I found myself more and more attracted to him. And one day, he confessed his feelings to me. I want to date you with marriage in mind. I was extremely happy to hear that. The fact that he mentioned marriage as a consideration showed that he was serious about me. Of course, the answer was yes, and we started dating. Our relationship with Joel began, and it was a lot of fun. He knew various dating spots and came up with different date plans for me. Thanks to him, I was able to have many enjoyable experiences and discover new things even in places I thought I already knew. We continued our relationship smoothly from then on. Around two years into our relationship, Joel proposed to me one day. I want to be with you every day for the rest of my life, Samantha. So, will you marry me? Yes, I will. Thank you. And so, We decided to get married. I went with him to his parents' house. Nice to meet you. I'm Samantha. Hi. Good to finally meet you, Samantha. His mother seemed like a kind person. His father had already passed away due to illness a few years ago. What made you like Joel? She asked me that question. Um, I think it's because he's kind and funny. Yes, indeed. Joe is good at talking, isn't he? Just like a salesman, I suppose? Oh, yes, I can see that. He's doing a job that suits him well. Well, with you too. You don't have to praise me like that. The introduction went smoothly and was quite enjoyable. It seemed like I wouldn't have to worry much about issues with my mother in law after marrying Joe. Also, I didn't know this before. But my house and Joe's parents' house were very close to each other. If I had known it was this close, I would have come to visit earlier. Sorry about that. But if I had known that my girlfriend's parents' house was nearby, it would have made me a bit more conscious. Like, I should go and greet them, you know? Well, you have a point. I thought we could wait until we got married for things like that. That's why I brought it up now. I see. But once we are married, we can easily visit my mom whenever we want. That's a good thing, right? Yes, you're right. His mother was listening to our conversation with wide eyes. When you get married, won't you rent a new place? Are you going to live in Samantha's apartment together? Samantha's house is actually an inherited property from her late grandparents. Oh, I see. Actually, my parents passed away in an accident, and I was taken in by my grandparents and raised by them since I was young. Both of my grandparents have also passed away, so now I live alone in the spacious house. We've been discussing living together there once we are married. I see. I didn't know that. It's unfortunate about your parents. If you two have talked it over and made that decision, then it's fine. Congratulations on your marriage, Samantha and Joel. Thank you, Mom. Samantha, if you ever need anything, feel free to come to me. 
thank you very much. His mother seemed really kind, and I was relieved. As I thought that, I went home with Joe. Most of his belongings had already been moved, and it felt like he was already halfway living in my house. Your mom seems like a really kind person. I'm glad. You think so? Well, I don't consider myself that kind, to be honest. Really? I think you are incredibly kind. You think that makes you the kind one, Sam? Oh, really? <laughs> we laughed while complimenting each other, with the belief that we could have a happy married life together. We had our wedding ceremony. We hadn't shared the fact that Joe and I were dating with our colleagues at work. So when they heard about our marriage, they were surprised. But they said we looked good together and congratulated us. Many people attended our wedding. I think it was wonderful that we were able to have a happy wedding ceremony. After that, we started our newlywed life. Since we were practically living together already, there wasn't much change in our daily life. However, being newlywed had a mysterious power. That made everything feel fresh and exciting. Even after marriage, I continued working, and we both had jobs. My husband wasn't good at household chores, especially cooking. So I took charge of cooking, and he helped with other chores like cleaning and laundry. At first, he was still getting used to it, but he tried his best with cleaning. It's really appreciated to have a husband who cooperates with household chores. In this way, we smoothly enjoyed our newlywed life, and I felt happy every day. But less than a year of marriage, my husband started going on business trips more frequently. I will be going on a business trip for about a week. Huh? Again? You've been going on a lot of trips lately. Well. They seemed to have high expectations of me. They've entrusted me with some important tasks. I see. Well, you have to do your best then. Yeah. Sorry for leaving the house again. It's okay. Take care, all right? Although I said those words, I felt a bit lonely. We're still newly wed, and yet they keep increasing the number of business trips. What is the company thinking? I almost wanted to complain, but work is work. Besides, we might have children in the future, so it's important to have savings. So it's crucial for my husband to achieve results in his work. A few months later, my husband was given another long-term assignment. They want me to go on a business trip for about three months this time. Huh? Three months? They want me to go and provide support from headquarters as they set up a new branch. That's a really important job. Yeah, they have high expectations of me. But three months will be tough. I'm sorry, Samantha. It's okay. But you will have weekends off, right? Can you come back on weekends? I'm not sure. It's in Nevada, so there are several layovers during the flight. And it might be difficult to come back every weekend. I see. Then let's video call each other. Oh、uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Afterwards, my husband went on a long-term business trip. I felt a bit lonely living alone. But then, a certain problem arose. Huh? What is this? When I returned home from work as usual. There were a large number of garbage bags placed in front of the entrance. I had no idea what was going on, but I couldn't just leave the garbage like that. Although it was creepy, I gathered them all and disposed of them at the garbage station. Seriously, who could be doing this? As I was thinking that, on another day, a large amount of garbage was again dumped in front of my house. Huh? Again? Ooh, what is going on? This is clearly some form of harassment. But I didn't know the purpose or the reason behind it. I considered reporting it to the police, 
but it could also be someone I know or neighbor. Thinking that way, I decided to investigate on my own. I decided to install security cameras. And there, to my surprise, I saw the person responsible. Hmm. It turned out that it was my mother-in-law who was dumping the large amount of garbage bags. Why would my mother-in-law do such a thing? From then on, the garbage was repeatedly dumped in the same manner, and it was always my mother-in-law. Why would she do something like this? I couldn't understand why my mother-in-law would engage in such harassment. I grabbed the garbage bags and immediately headed towards my mother-in-law. Oh, Samantha, what's the matter? Um, what exactly is going on? Why are you dumping this garbage in front of my house? Well, it's for the purpose of harassing you. To my surprise, my mother-in-law boldly admitted to it. Harassment? That's terrible. Oh, stop being so annoying. I've never liked you from the start. What do you mean you've never liked me? Have I done something to inconvenience or offend you? Why do I have to hear such things? As I tremble with anger, my mother-in-law handed something to me. It was the screen of her smartphone. Huh? On the screen, there was a message that said, Look inside the garbage bags. I was puzzled as I opened the garbage bags. And inside the bags, there was something I never expected to find. This is... Samantha, that's enough. If you have time to bother me, go home. I followed her instructions and immediately returned home. Inside the garbage bags I saw, there were photos of my husband. My husband was having an affair. What my mother-in-law had put in the bag were evidence photos and copies of documents related to the affair. And she did all of that to make me aware of it. But why would she choose such a method? It bothered me, but I couldn't find an answer no matter how much I thought about it. First and foremost, I needed to prepare for a divorce from my husband. I immediately consulted a lawyer's office. The lawyer assured me that with this much evidence, there shouldn't be any problems. That gave me some temporary relief. Then, I received a sudden call from my husband. Hello, Joe. What's up? By surprise that he was calling me instead, I answered the phone. Samantha, are you okay? I was just wondering if there was any conflict with my mother. I couldn't believe my ears. Why? Oh, uh, well, as long as there is nothing, it's fine. I stormed into my mother-in-law's house and confronted her, but I didn't tell my husband about it. Yet, why would he make such a phone call? Could it be related to my mother-in-law's roundabout ways of doing things? If she wanted to inform me about her son's affair, she could have directly told me. I had a hunch that something was going on, so I came up with a plan. Like my mother-in-law, I placed a garbage bag in front of my in-law's house. I put a note inside, specifying that I wanted to meet and talk directly, along with the location and date. I hoped that my mother-in-law would come. With that in mind, I waited at the cafe I had designated, and then my mother-in-law appeared. Samantha, you! I had a feeling that something was going on. There are things that we can't talk about in each other's houses, right? Like being secretly watched by Joe. As I said that, my mother-in-law's face turned pale. Please don't worry. Thanks to that, I've been able to proceed with preparations for divorcing him. So now, I want to help you. As I said that, my mother-in-law burst into tears. I'm sorry, Samantha. I've been threatening by that kid. When I heard the details, I was shocked. Apparently, my mother-in-law found out about the affair before I did. My mother-in-law tried to warn him, but he didn't listen. And then, 
He installed listening devices in both my in law's house and my house, and even took away her phone. I felt a chill run down my spine upon hearing that. There were listening devices in my house too? Yes, that's what he said. That's awful. My mother in law said she pleaded with him to stop doing such things, but he didn't listen. My husband's true intention seems to be to take away the house I inherited. And he threatened my mother in law, saying he would harm me if she got in his way. So my mother in law was trying to make me aware of the danger through those acts of harassment. I can't believe Joe would do such a thing. It seems that he plans to take ownership of the house and then kick you out to live with another woman. What? That's so heartless. I was filled with anger. Come to think of it, my husband had been expressing his desire to change the house ownership to his name. I found the paperwork and procedures troublesome, so I refused. But now, I understand why he wanted it. Let's consult the police immediately. When I said that, my mother in law hesitated for a moment and then nodded slightly. We went to the police station and explained the presence of listening devices and the content my mother in law was told by my husband. Arresting him would be difficult given the current situation, but I was able to obtain the restraining order against him once the divorce was finalized. After that, I decided to confront my husband with the information I had gathered. Joe, can we have a video call right now? I sent a message to my husband, who claimed to be on a business trip during a certain holiday. But as expected, he said he couldn't do a video call. Why? It's a day off, so you can spare a little time, right? Sorry, I'm meeting someone related to work, so I can't do it. I messaged my husband, pretending to be oblivious. So, I saw you sitting at Divine Cafe with a woman I don't know? Immediately, my husband called me. Samantha, what are you talking about? He sounded flustered, standing up and looking around anxiously. I sent him a photo. It was a picture of my husband happily chatting with his affair partner at the cafe. See? I'm telling you that I saw you guys. I was surprised when I saw you there by chance while I was going shopping. I mean, you were supposed to be on a business trip to Nevada, but here you are in a neighboring town with an unknown woman. Hey, Joel, this is an affair, right? Um, well, that's. My husband was clearly disturbed. It was just a coincidence that I found out, but it's solid evidence, so there is no escaping from it. My husband let out an almost inaudible voice. Let's prepare a lawyer and proceed with the divorce immediately. Wait, just wait a minute. Despite my husband pleading with me, I hung up the phone without paying attention to him. I pretended it was a coincidence, but this was all part of my plan. I had found out from my mother in law's investigation that my husband was at his affair partner's house. So I waited near the affair partner's house for them to leave, and discreetly followed their car. My husband quickly returned home and came to apologize to me. Uh, I'm sorry. I was momentarily possessed. I won't do it again. Please forgive me. My husband apologized as he came forward. There is no way I can forgive you. You were pretending to be on a business trip while living at your affair partner's place, right? I can't continue our marriage with such a liar. Let's get a divorce. As my determination became clear, my husband slumped down weakly on the spot. Shortly after that, I divorced him. Of course, I made sure to claim substantial compensation for my ex husband and his affair partner. By the way, my ex-husband never found out that my mother-in-law had been helping me. I decided to sell the house I inherited from my grandparents. My mother-in-law also sold her house and moved without saying anything to her son. She also cancelled her phone contract, so got a new one. 
It seems my ex-husband planned to seek cooperation from my mother-in-law in paying the compensation. But when he realized she had already moved and he became quite panicked, he contacted me multiple times, desperately begging for forgiveness. However, I made sure to secure a promise from him to pay the compensation, even if it was in installments. If there was any delay in payment, I made arrangements to have his salary garnished. It appears my ex-husband was eventually abandoned by his affair partner. In the end, he not only failed to acquire the house, but also faced the decision to pay compensation. Currently, he lives a lonely life shuttling between work and a cheap apartment, with most of his salary dedicated to paying the compensation. On the other hand, I made a bold decision and purchased a condominium. Since the inherited house from my grandparents was in good condition, I was able to sell it at a higher price than I expected. I plan to focus on my work and increase my own income, aiming to build my assets and secure a comfortable future. I won't rush into another romantic relationship for a while, and instead, take my time to find the next partner without any pressure.